Blessings, beloveds, welcome back. So today's video is going to be fairly quick, not as long as my usual ones, because I wasn't even going to come on and do this um, because I'm just taking some time out. But in any case, I decided just to do about a maybe 20 minute video on this uh, Taurus lunar eclipse because it is the final eclipse of the year. It uh, connects to the Taurus Scorpio axis of which we've had all the eclipses on that axis for the entire of 2022. So it's it's a really big eclipse. It's a it's a total lunar eclipse. So it's a full moon, but it happens to be a lunar eclipse, and it's a total lunar eclipse. So it's it's very uh, full bodied, very potent. There's a lot of things going on, but before I go into the charts and so forth, I just want to say, first of all, I just want to give a shout out to two very special friends of mine, Fee and Anne, DJ Nocturna, um, who are just uh, really special people in my life and they've really been very supportive during some really difficult times that I've been going through. So just a quick shout out to the two of you. Um, and also DJ Nocturna has done the Sagittarius thing and has made it all the way to Australia from her way. So that's pretty cool. And I'll be catching up with her later on. Um, the other thing that I wanted to kind of start today's um, session with is um, the, the singer Prince, who's actually like literally, literally one of my absolute favorite artists and has been since I was a little kid. I was just watching a one minute clip of him speak yesterday and I've seen a few of these over the years, but I haven't seen this particular one. And so he was just talking about, um, this was in 1999, he said these words. So it's um, really interesting. The guy was quite prophetic actually, really. Um, he said, media driven fear is what's going to be the, the, one of the biggest problems um, for the collective moving on. He said, um, this uh, media-driven fear is extremely detrimental to our health on all levels. And he said, what it's doing is it's, it's taking humanity through a disintegration of values. Um, and that disintegration of values includes a point where humanity has reached a level where no one's even speaking the truth anymore. He said, the truth is you are either here to enlighten or discourage and i found those words so touching and so profound um he said uh in in time remember he said this in 1999 in time uh we'll, we will all just find out that the media is a complete misconception and so when I think about that and the fact that he said that in 1999 is uh, to me quite extraordinary because in 1999, um, when you think about technology and media and so forth and everything that's going on in the world right now, for instance, it was nothing like that back then. I remember 1999 very, very well. Some of you might be too young. Some of you might have been born in the 90s, etc. But I was around and I was old enough to know um, what was sort of going on. And I'm bringing this up, I guess, because Mars in Gemini is proving to be uh, very, very difficult, at least on the collective sphere. Um, and it is in Gemini and recently when retrograde, retrograde and will be in Gemini until around about March 2023. And so I'm just noticing the... Um, the fire bombs, you know, fire bombs that are coming out of people's mouths and the almost verbal diarrhea, right? <laughs> In a lot of ways, you know, um, everyone's just got, you know, such a sort of strong opinion on what they perceive about somebody else's life, right? About somebody else's circumstances and so on and so forth. And they um, are feeling the need to, um, to verbally express this with um, a very strong conviction. And I admire conviction and I admire passion and passionate speech um, and having the courage to speak up and things like that. I think that's really, really important actually throughout our life, really. But I'm just noticing with, you know, with this um, social media particularly, there's just um, so much verbal diarrhea on so many levels. And I'm just thinking actually about um, 
uh, Kane West, who's now known as Yay. Um, I'm sure many of you are aware of what's been going on with him. It's obviously become such a worldwide, um, you know, matter as if like, it's like this craze, you know, it's it's like people just swoop in on, on something and it becomes this hysteria type situation, right? And um, I don't really have a personal opinion on him necessarily. I'm just very observant of certain things that I notice and, and I mainly pay attention because I, I'm very interested in how the astrology uh, speaks to the things that I'm actually observing. And just very quickly, and I posted his chart, there's no time of birth, but even without a time of birth, it's quite startling what's happening to him at the moment. And all these eclipses in Scorpio and Taurus are just activating his chart big time. And particularly, he's got a triple conjunction with Mars, uh, Venus and Chiron, all in Taurus, actually. And so Taurus, of course, is the archetype that corresponds to survival, um, money, resources, etc. And his, um, it, it appears at the moment that that's all been sort of taken away from him, as it were. But everybody around that, um, regardless of which side people are sitting on, whether they're in support or not in support, everyone has such incredibly strong um, views and, and, and so many sort of self-righteous attitudes and perceptions and so forth. And I'm, I'm just watching it and it looks like a fucking circus basically. Um, so it's just very, very interesting to see how strong uh, this particular Mars in Gemini is. And um, it's, I think the, the problem with it actually is the square to Neptune that it's, it's picked up. Um, and I think it picks it up three times. And so that's creating this hysteria kind of vibe around what everybody is sort of um perceiving and expressing and, and you know they're they're per because gemini is our personal opinion right that's a personal opinion um doesn't necessarily mean that it's right not that i really like to see things as right or wrong because again that's very gemini it's splitting things up and that's what's actually happening with this um Kane situation, Kanye situation, uh, there's a real split and division culturally, uh, musically and otherwise relative to his position and, and what's happening. And um, it's, I've always just been very aware that um, when we project our uh, desires and our um, godlike sort of force and energy onto a particular person could be a guru could be a priest could be a singer whoever it is we we we've really lost ourselves when we do that you know there's 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 no one in this world that that can be god for you god is god and god is actually in you the but when that personality ego component kicks in, I mean, for this particular artist that I'm referring to, he's literally virtually stated that he believes he's, he's God or the son of God and things like that, you know, and, and not in a way where we would say we are all children of God. We are all um, souls that emerge from the one source creation of all things and that we have this um you know, unconditional sense of our true belonging and our true essence. Unfortunately, he's not speaking about it in that way. He's got a sun, um, Jupiter conjunction in Gemini, and that's like the God ego complex, basically, right? It's just very, very interesting. But anyway, I'm just highlighting that just to demonstrate the power of solar and lunar eclipses, particularly because in 2022, they have all occurred just in Taurus and Scorpio. And that's not necessarily a typical theme. Okay. Usually we'll have another sign thrown in there. Have a look at the eclipses for next year. You'll notice that they're in Aries and Libra and there's one in Taurus, for instance. So you've got three signs. Just a very interesting, uh, potent year. 2022, I think is, um, a lot more potent actually than 2020 and 2021. There's just, um, this tremendous intensity and potency because of these eclipses. Uh, activating this uh, Taurus Scorpio polarity, which speaks so much to our survival, our attachments, 
our need to actually let go and transform as well, right? And so for some people in some situations, these solar and lunar eclipses are going to activate these themes about survival, about money, about resources, about shared resources, about trust, about loyalty, about betrayal. You know, those are Scorpio themes, right? And Taurus attachment and holding on to old sets of values and things like that and not being able to... Um, to move on from certain things. And I think this Taurus lunar eclipse is kind of like the, the, the final straw, as it were, right, relative to 2022 and this Scorpio Taurus axis pointing us to a new direction because this lunar eclipse is the full moon, right, total lunar eclipse, and the moon is conjunct the north node in Taurus. So it's showing us that we really need to move on from the past right and understand that there's a there's a new paradigm being born but the chaos and the complexity of the crisis the cataclysmic nature of this 3d reality that is so fucking extreme and has been so extreme the last three years we are still at that point where things haven't really settled down at all you know we don't have um i think it's fair to say for, for the majority of us it's very difficult to grasp a clear sort of trajectory of what we are heading into because there's still so much chaos. There's still so many things falling apart, crumbling, being cracked open, smashed open, truth bombs being truth bombs being thrown everywhere, as it were. And so there's this fucking chaos in this matrix, right, of information just like spewing out everywhere all over the world. And like Prince said, media driven fear is one of the biggest problems in our society overall through the entire globe so i guess it's probably important to think about that as well with mars in gemini where you know people are just shooting all these um arrows because mars would be arrows and words logos is gemini so people are just spitting out all these arrows left right and center without really actually giving some deep contemplation or consideration as to what the fuck they're actually talking about, right? It's it's just mind boggling the amount of verbal diarrhea. It's the only word I can think of, phrase I can think of to describe what I'm observing. And I, I've had to just kind of try and pull back a bit, withdraw and detach from it all because it, it drives you fucking mental basically. And Prince actually said as well that, um, our bodies are not designed to be bombarded by so much data data and sort of technological stuff that's just been injected into absolutely everything. You know, our whole lives is, it appears to be dominated and controlled by this technological force that is, it's kind of like, it's, it's reaching a, a new state a new stage of where it needs to head to. And it's kind of like um, teething, you know, when babies are teething, right? And so there's there's all this um, stuff kind of flying out and there's pain here and pain there. And there's no real sort of order with it at the moment. We're just kind of going through um, birthing processes of really all the shit that needs to be discarded and how we need to get recentered in ourselves and stop fucking listening and paying attention to the chaos and the media porn because that's what it is essentially so let's go straight into this um lunar eclipse <laughs> after i just um smash that little <clears throat> rant <laughs> all righty so here's the chart for the um uh full moon eclipse and this is um based in melbourne australia so never mind the positions of everything of course and the most important thing that is worth for you considering is where is this lunar eclipse relative to your own birth chart and just remember as well that first of all the bigger picture is that these uh, taurus scorpio eclipses are a theme that have been unfolding for, for this entire year and we're really at the absolute end of it now I mean, um, today's the 4th of November, the eclipse is 7th and 8th of um, November, and then we've got December and boom, 2022 is gone. And I'll be very glad to see this year gone. It's been really one of the most difficult years outside of 2017 for me. 2017 and 2022 are probably gonna go down historically for the, for the most challenging years for me 
um, but also the, the most transformative years as well. Transformation doesn't come with a box of chocolates and a bottle of wine. It comes through deep, deep agonising, um, confrontational, um, serious contemplation, um, truths, realisations, awareness, understanding, insight, um, really dying to things, you know, and that's kind of what I've been going through actually the last 15 years since Pluto has been in my 12th house. So now this, uh, <laughs> this little lunar lady here, um, first of all, the moon uh, in Taurus is the exalted position. So the moon in Taurus is actually um, a term that comes to mind is the rock of Gibraltar right, which is an expression to describe um, somebody who is just so strong and stable, immovable, right, and that has tremendous benefits. And on the other hand, it can have some downsides as well, because sometimes we need to move through something and we can't because we feel so incredibly stuck, which is Taurus because it is a fixed sign. However, the moon in Taurus on that emotional level provides um, one of the most sounding, um, easy, stabilizing emotional responses to situations. I've seen many people with moon in Taurus and um, they really are very, very stable emotionally. It's really interesting actually because the moon rules cancer, right? And so most people make the assumption, oh, moon in Cancer, it's in rulership. Wow, what a wonderful place to have the moon. Um, and I've said this before. Yes, it is wonderful in, in certain ways relative to dreams and images and imagination. Moon in Cancer is probably one of the most imaginative signs, so creative, like it's, it's spectacular on those levels. But when it comes to emotional stability, forget about it. It's one of the most difficult placements for the moon. So the moon exalted in Taurus seems to do a lot better on that emotional stable level. So that's like a, a basic um, core uh, interpretation or characteristic of just the moon in Taurus. But we don't have just the moon in Taurus. We have a total lunar eclipse. Lunar eclipses are very, very powerful energetically in the ether, in our own emotional body, and always bring to illumination and light um, what's been sort of building up. We could say what's been building up this entire year, and perhaps just to narrow it down, we can say, where did this cycle begin? It began two weeks ago with the Scorpio solar eclipse at two degrees, two degrees of Scorpio. So wherever that solar eclipse began, something now has come to further light right with this lunar eclipse because that's what the full moon does that's what the total lunar eclipse does it illuminates things solar eclipses seem to be a lot more um, cataclysmic in nature lunar eclipses can be but they are they seem to be more of a manifestation or embodiment of what's going on in our own emotional feeling body, right? Because the moon corresponds to the emotional body, the feeling body, the subconscious component of ourselves, um, our security, our safety, our daily rhythms, you know, just literally our, our day to day uh, flow of how we are responding um, to whatever is presenting to us, right? Fundamentally, the moon seeks to feel security. It's a, it's a very unconscious, subconscious energy, right? It has no, um, it's not about intellect or foresight and um, being rational and things like that. The moon just, if you think about um, an infant that uh, needs to be fed by its mother and, and needs to be comforted and, and nurtured and needs to be um, provided with that safety and security. That's what the moon requires in all of us, regardless of our age or life experience and so forth. The moon is quite an infantile archetype, right? That's a very good word for the moon. So the moon in Taurus, yes, it, it has this natural sense of feeling stable, but it is conjunct Uranus, exactly to the degree 
I've always seen when um, the moon is aspected by an outer planet particularly, and I would include Chiron in this as well, um, it, it offsets the moon. It offsets its natural inherent um, ability, desire, need to feel safe and secure. It, it just off-centers it, offsets it, and spins it around, right, in, in a lot of different ways, depending on the um, the outer planet that's involved. In this case, it's Uranus, which is a very destabilizing force for the moon. On the other hand, it can also um, speak to emotional exhilaration and freedom because it might crack something open that needs to be cracked open inside us. It has that energy of Uranus, but it also has um, the square from Saturn. So it's basically, and Venus is involved, right? And, and we can throw in Mercury into the mix as well. So there's this huge intensity with this Scorpio energy, South Node, Mercury, Sun, Venus, that's Vulcan for those that are wondering. It's an esoteric body that's used for esoteric astrology. We have all this um, intensity, which in Scorpio, it, it's all about passion, right? And it's about truth bonds and it's about exposing the bullshit and it's about speaking the truth and it's about diving deeper into deeper layers of our own unconscious, our own subconscious. It's about our impulses, our desires, what we are really passionate about and what we are perhaps processing on these um, interior levels, inner levels, <coughs> relative to what we are dying to at the moment. It's Scorpio season. Scorpio season is all about death rebirth. It always is in some kind of way, depending on whatever else is going on in our chart, that's going to be felt more acutely or more strongly for, for other people than it is for others, right? It always, everything that we talk about, everything that we look at, we cannot read it in a vacuum, right? This is a, a general overview, but when it comes to your own individual chart, life, journey and so forth, it's, it's, um, it's a different picture because you are a unique soul. You have your own story. You have your own journey. You are at a particular point in your own life right now, right? Um, <clears throat> now, the Uranus can, as I said, really be very unsettling for a very um, stabilizing moon in Taurus. Moon in Taurus on a very basic um, <clears throat> mundane level just really requires to feel stable, doesn't really want anything out of the ordinary to pop up, nothing unexpected, which is Uranus, um, and is quite content just to kind of chill out, have some food, have some wine, whatever, right? The pleasures, Taurus, Taurus, it's Venus rule. Venus is what? She is the goddess of love, but she is the goddess of pleasures, okay? So it's an interesting setup here because we've got Venus in Scorpio, who's been um, in the last few days <clears throat> has been opposite Uranus. And also after the opposition to Uranus formed the square to Saturn. So she's been kind of jolted a bit. On the one hand, she's probably been seeking to, um, to express her own sense of um, individuality, authenticity, truth, Venus opposite Uranus. There might be some unsettling situations in relationships for some people. Um, it's a very freeing, exhilarating type of energy, but only if you are ready for it. If you're not ready, it can be traumatic and shocking. And because these two archetypes, Venus and Uranus, are in the access that corresponds to money, resources, survival, then these are the themes that are going to be highlighted in different ways for different people. And if it's not about resources and money, it is about your passions, your desires, your impulses, things that you are looking deeply to, um, to feel, to connect with, um, things around your, your own values and things like that. And opposite Venus opposite Uranus really needs to have an, an expression, a voice of freedom to feel authentic and true unto herself. Um, and but it's just so fascinating because it was just a couple of days later where she formed the square to Saturn. So there's a bit of a jolt 
or a bit of an awakening, a bit of a, a freeing, liberating experience that is activated with the Venus opposite Uranus, but then she comes to the square to Saturn and, and he basically puts those walls up and says, whoa, hang on, little lady. You, you've just gone a little bit too far, perhaps, on that level. We need to kind of bring back a little dose of reality, as it were, right? <clears throat> I think that kind of experience happens more when we project Saturn, right? Because when we project Saturn, we just experience it as everybody out there um resisting something about what we are trying to do say or be however when we are um when we are working with saturn at a um, embodied and integrated level we're able to actually recognize our own limits saturn saturn is limits so <clears throat> i bring that energy into myself and realize where i may need to you know um push that back a little bit or uh, create a few clearer boundaries over here or know my limits with this situation over here. So that has a really healthy level, right? When you're talking about Saturn like that, but when we are not integrated to sat with Saturn and we just see it out there around us, we experience it as a force that resists us. So we have people resisting who we are trying to be. So that's something that we all each need to reflect on because uh, we're all different right so it just depends um who you are and and how you are um resonating with this energy and of course what is activating in your chart furthermore this satin square uranus is is the final sort of closing square these two have been dancing in this square for quite some time it has spoken very specifically to this collective um cataclysmic crisis of the old Saturn crumbling, the new Uranus trying to bring through um, a sense of awakening. And that that's thrown around so loosely, that term, and, and people sort of, some people take it for granted, but you, you can simplify it and just say, well, what do you mean by awakening? Well, what I mean by awakening is um, starting to see reality for what it actually is as opposed to being indoctrinated, imprinted, and completely conditioned, which is Saturn. So that, that conflict that's been uh, in the ether for some time is coming to a close as well. And so the, the last time, I mean, the, the, the square's not going to be exact because they've kind of passed that, but they are still within range of being square each other. But Saturn is now really starting to pick up momentum since it went direct just recently so it's really going to start moving away from uranus but in terms of this lunar eclipse that vibration of saturn uranus holds a space within this lunar eclipse energy so the the lunar eclipse eclipses illuminates and brings forth what's been uh, working on that platform relative to saturn uranus in our own life and of course in the collective as well so it's a real mixture of energy here. I mean, lunar eclipses and solar eclipses are activation points. They can be very distressing and very unsettling, but they can also be very powerful portals for our own um, path moving forward because the eclipses involve the nodes. And what are the nodes? The nodes are an axis of a position that um, we are integrating with, right? Um, that speaks to a pattern, a theme, South Node in Scorpio, that we are moving away from, just to put it very, very simply, and integrating towards a North Node in Taurus. We had the North Node in Taurus conjunct Uranus not so long ago as well, and Uranus in Taurus. So, you know, we, we just a new paradigm is being born around the whole um, perspective we've had on values in, in our life, in, in society, culturally and otherwise. And with Uranus there, there's such an innovative edge to it all. Um, there are some old values, I think, and traditions that um, are so incredibly valuable and 
have been lost somewhere along the way, just like Prince said, you know. Um, so some of those, I think, need to be sort of reintegrated um, in this uh, jungle chaos of technology that uh, is driving people fucking insane. Like, it's driving people mad. You, you, you can just see it. Mental health, um, which I used to work in the field of mental health for many years, um, I remember when I was a teenager, when I was growing up, there, there, you did not see um, so many people um, homeless walking around in the streets, um, just being completely psychotic, you know, just, I mean, it was there to some extent and in some places more than others, yeah, for sure. But it's gone from, say, 20% to 100% now. Like, it's so extreme. People are just... Um, the, 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 the technological age has taken over, it's invaded our, our center and it's created this fracture everywhere. And so, um, this is, you can't say, well, it's because of technology that we've arrived there. So in other words we can't blame it on something or someone because um i mean if if anyone was to be responsible i, I would definitely say it is the, the the giant um the giant greedy corporations and companies and media who uh constantly bombard and, and promote and invade uh, people's psyche unconsciously and consciously Right. So, yes, they, they do have a lot to answer for. There's no question of that, actually. But at the same time, we also have a free will to choose as to what we're going to allow in and what we're going to engage with and what we are going to pay attention to. So there's no point saying it's their fault, it's their fault, it's because of this, it's because of that, because really that just leaves you in a place of disempowerment. So let's think about a place of self-empowerment which is Scorpio. Scorpio is about self-empowerment, but Scorpio is also about disempowerment. You can't have one without the other. You can't know one without the other. You can't know rebirth unless you know death. They're all part of the same coin. They're, they're just sort of flipped, flipping over. On one hand, you see that. On the other hand, you see that or experience that. You experience an ending and not long after you will experience a new birth. It's, it's always the way, right? So this um, birth, death, to use that language, process, really only uh, pertains to the material world. And when I say material, I don't just mean um, just physical. I mean, it naturally corresponds to psychological and emotional um, journeys that we go through as well, because we'll have a clearing, an ending, a new beginning on those levels as well, for sure. But I'm just trying to make a distinction between this concept of birth and death really only applies to this third dimensional reality, because the soul, um, it has no beginning and no end, it doesn't die. It's not born and then and, and then it dies. We, we seem to sort of relate to life and see life in that, you know, linear um, sort of trajectory of, you know, past, present, future, and we think, okay, I was born at some point, I'm going to die. And so there's the beginning and there's the end. And yeah, that's true for here. But your essence is, is purely infinite. No one could ever take that away from you. Imagine that. So much can be taken away from us and so much is at different times. Look at what's happening to Kanye. You know, he's like, yeah, he's being hit pretty hard. So, and that can happen to anyone, which goes to show you because, you know, for years he's been bragging about how much money he's got and, you know, he's the wealthiest um, coloured, I don't want to sound in politically incorrect, so I'm just kind of, what word do I use? But anyway, he's always claimed, you know, he's one of the richest men in the world, yada, yada, yada. And, um, yeah, that, I'm not making a judgment about that, but I guess sometimes, you know, the Lord works in mysterious ways. <laughs> I think, um, yeah, we kind of, I think it's important to be humble um, because uh, we all have a time where we might experience the riches of the material world 
and it might not be in this lifetime, could have been in a previous lifetime, could be in the next, whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's actually not fucking important at all. <laughs> What's important is, um, is your soul on track? Is it on track? That's what's important. But anyway, I think um, when we sort of lose sight of um, that deeper um, essence of where we come from and who we are and um, how we are being reminded um, through every incarnation and every journey that unfolds, we are being reminded about um, our source, our, our Father in heaven just to use biblical language. Sorry if that puts any of you off, but, you know, it's just language. That's all it is. It doesn't matter what word we put um, towards describing soul and essence. Language could never really describe it, actually. Language fails um, extremely when it comes to actually um, accurately uh, encapsulating the infinity of soul and source right so it's something that we either sense or feel within or don't so this lunar eclipse i think will be relatively challenging for many people um, and it will be also the continuation of, of really what began two weeks ago with the solar eclipse and furthermore it's really about this whole entire year and I guess, you know, with Uranus there, the best we can take from that is um, <clears throat> perhaps trusting the intuition for one, because Uranus corresponds to intuition, right brain, light bulb moments, <clears throat> aha moments, um, sudden flashes of insight, you know, see what comes through in that way and how that might speak to enabling you to feel um, more free within yourself free is freedom liberation uh, you know two of the best words <clears throat> and individuation for uranus taurus you know moon taurus it, it's going to want to hang on to a few things but it's going to have to let go of quite a few things too so i think um i'll just leave it there because i have some um things to do <laughs> and um let me just see if i've kind of covered the main points <clears throat> yeah i think that'll do um i guess that the biggest takeaway really is it's the final eclipse for the year um if it, if it activates some uncomfortable processes within um What's, what's the answer to that? I guess uh, it's a different answer for each person, right? But um, when something uncomfortable is, is activated in me, um, and this is just the way I deal with it, and everyone is different, but I will withdraw. So instead of trying to make myself crazy busy so that I cannot feel what's opening up, even even when it's really uncomfortable or dark or just yeah just not nice um i won't distract myself with with things because i i like to face things head on in areas i'm ruled by the head as it were with my sun sign so um and scorpio venus star point i i just kind of dive in there you know um um, I'm like a suffering silence kind of uh, soul, right? That's just me. Um, but I'll withdraw from that that madness because it is complete fucking madness. That third dimension reality. It's 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 so fucking mad at the moment. It's it has been for three years, but I feel like it's it's even more mad at the moment, right? And so, if something does come up for you with this lunar eclipse, try as best as you can to sit with the energy that rises because whatever comes up is not going to be there permanently. It, it will rise so that you can see it and then it will dissipate, right? So sometimes it's not about trying to fix or, or change something. Sometimes it's just about sitting with it 
and you know just giving that space to those feelings that experience whatever it is um and preferably with no judgment right and then just watch it dissipate because it will it always does so um wishing you all uh hopefully a positive um, last lunar eclipse for 2022 and I will see you guys in um, a few weeks time probably about two weeks time or so somewhere around there um, and uh, thanks for all your comments in the community section as well I throw some posts there every now and then um, sometimes it's easier than doing a video although I prefer to do videos because I'm not a big fan of writing to be honest um, never was. I'm a fan of writing poetry or writing music or something like that. I've got Venus in Pisces in the third house, right? Um, I'm just not one of those Virgo, Gemini writing, you know, a thousand lines for one point that I'm trying to make. <laughs> so anyway, I'll see you guys very, very soon. Much love and many star blessings. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.